Welcome to the Big E Outdoor Radio Show with your hosts, Big E and Brandon of Big E TV. Found nationally on your favorite outdoor television channels. Big E Outdoor Radio challenges all the hot topics in the outdoors from racing to hunting and even grilling in the backyard. Our mission is to educate on the facts of the impact of the outdoors on all our lives and encourage good stewardship and good fellowship among our ranks. Follow Big E Outdoors on Facebook at Big E Outdoors and Big E Outdoor Radio. Send us feedback and get in on conversations with us. Fasten your seatbelts, because this ain't your daddy's morning show. We'll be right back with Biggie and Brandon in the morning on Big E Outdoor Radio. Big E Outdoors, located at Cedar Creek, is reopening its doors soon after its new remodeling. Home to the area's first and only big game hunting museum with educational exhibits displaying animals from around the world and facts around the hunters' contributions to their survival. Pick up some unique souvenirs and gifts from the museum and from the Big E TV shows. Meet the pro staff from Big E TV and Big E Outdoor Radio, a great place to stop in with the whole family. And while you're there, book your next hunting trip with the Big E Outdoors Professional Hunters. With over 21 personal hunting destinations worldwide, you'll be sure to find a quality getaway with the Big E Outdoors destinations. Big E Outdoors is also home to Adrenaline Hydrographic. Check us out online at BigEOutfitters.com and register to win a free hunt. Big E Outdoors at Cedar Creek. Hey, we welcome you all back to a brand new hour of Big E Outdoor Radio. And uh, you know what? In this hour, Brandon, let's talk about women in the outdoors. All right. You know, that's getting to be a lot of women in the outdoors. They're, they're coming in. It's a quickly growing, uh, we talked about this before, it's fastest growing numbers in hunting and in the outdoors. You know, but there's a lot of controversy if you watch social media on um, the women and between the women on their uh, the diva type thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, first of all, every every gal that is on is calling themselves some kind of huntress, and yeah. they all go on. And and I and I blame this on the products and the companies that are out there. They're all looking for. Pro staff, pro staff. Well, the pro staff, you know, like our pro staff is actually people that actually work with the company and do filming and help us out. Yeah. Okay. But a lot of these companies that are out there with the, whether they're arrow sights or lighted knocks or uh, wraps or whatever the heck they are, uh, you know, the the clothing lines and things like that, they're just adding on everybody and anybody to their pro staff because they want all these good-looking gals on there and they want them to put something on Facebook and say that they're, they're you know, Jane Doe and I'm with with this pro staff and I have, you know, and, and then do up their page just so that they get another name out there on social media. And so these gals are out there and look at some of their pages and it's like, you know, my name is is Susie Smith, and I'm a pro staff, or I'm a huntress, public figure. How do you figure you're a public figure? You've never been anywhere. Nobody even knows who you are. But they got it on there, and then they got pro staff for 70 different places. Yeah. You know, well, first of all, you know, unless you actually have a TV show and you're on television, there's no way you're a pro staff member for all those different places. And if you were, you might be sponsored by or you might be representing those places, but you cannot be, there's no way you could actually be on their pro staff physically doing anything. Yeah. They might add you and call you a pro staff member, but it's ridiculous and it's the company's fault because I actually talked to one of the gals and she goes, well, I actually am on the pro staff for many different companies and I do all this. Well, what do you do? You're on Facebook and you ask people to like their pages. Yeah. That doesn't make you a pro staff member. I'm sorry. You know... Well, I go to some trade shows with them. Okay, there's no way that you can physically go to trade shows with 10 different places and actually do anything for them. Because if you're at a trade show, you only could really represent one company. Yeah, you can't go there and represent them all. So, 
conflict of interest. It's kind of, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, and and so I mean, I can understand where some of these gals that really are out there hunting and doing things like that, that they're getting a little bit upset with some of that diva type thing that's coming on. And I mean, you know, if all of us guys did that, it'd be kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and then. The one thing that I guess I do side with the gals that do it, you know, some of them come on there and they have pictures of them out there in scantily clad clothing with their guns and their bows and whatever. That really, to me, that doesn't make a difference. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go do that, that's fine. I mean, uh, there's nothing that says a guy can't go out there in a Speedo and stand there with his 30 out 6 and take a picture. And, I mean, uh, we might look at him a little bit funny, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, oh man, whatever. I mean, however you want to have your picture taken, I mean, that's fine. And so that doesn't make them any less or more of a hunter. It's just all this ridiculous pro staff, pro staff stuff and this public figure and this, it's it's like a cry for attention. It, that is getting to be sickening, I yeah. think. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there some of them even around here. You see them, it's like, you know, something or another huntress and she's a pro staff member for this, this, and this, and this. And it's like, really? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. uh, so anyhow, anyway, if you see anybody that's a pro staff for Biggie Outdoors, let me tell you what, they're working. Yeah, They're out there filming hunts for us. They do go to trade shows with us. They work. They help our outfitters out, and they're busting their hind end. We don't just put on pro staff members to get people on Facebook. In fact, some of our pro staff members don't even have Facebook pages for us. They just are on our pro staff working. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so well, some of them can't have a Facebook page because of their jobs, right? Yes, that's uh, because they have high-profile jobs and they, for security reasons, cannot have a Facebook page. Uh, so, um, and you know that's that's kind of the way it is. So, I mean, we're not out there looking for pro staff for that particular reason. No, no. If we want somebody to push our Facebook likes. We'll hire them and tell them, hey, push our Facebook likes. That's it doesn't right. make you a That's post right. effort. That's right. You know, <laughs> we, we let our Facebook page grow based on people that are actually watching our videos and looking at our pictures. Yeah. And yeah. there's times that it grows, and then there's times it stays stagnant for a while. And then it grows, and it stays stagnant. So, you know, when our when our new television series comes out again here, it's coming in January, it'll take off again. Yep. Uh, especially with some of the great hunts that we got coming up and coming in January, Brandon, we're going to be heading out. We're doing a lot of hunting. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got news for you. <laughs> You're going to be doing a lot of hunting. So uh, <laughs> not, not much you can do about it. So, Well, I'll tell you what I would like to do. What's that? I'd like to, I would like to harvest a deer with a spear. A spear? I, somebody did that. Yeah, they did. I have the article right here, actually. Somebody right did it with that. What is that spear chucker thing? Or that spear uh, store dealer? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder this word. Okay, um, what is that thing? It's, uh, they said... at. At Lattles, or it's it's A T L A T L S, I believe. Um, I have no clue how to say that word, but uh, it was legalized in Missouri in 2010. Yeah, and it's also legal in Alabama. And a man this year, Adel Adel or Adel, whatever the heck it is, yeah. I've heard of it. I've heard of it, yep. and it's a spear throwing device. Yeah, that yep. makes it so that you can throw the spear that much harder, or faster, whatever it is. It's like it must be some kind of slingshot type device that you can yeah you put on through this through this spear at uh it's uh, basically uh yeah the missouri department of conservation announced recently that a hunter in saint charles county was able to harvest a large 15 point buck with a primitive weapon during archery season on october 24th that's primitive as it gets that it's about as primitive as it gets yeah uh, aside from jumping out of a tree with a homemade knife or something, you know, <laughs> but uh, that guy is definitely a spear chucker. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, uh, this man, man uh, I tell you, he uh, he hit the buck from his tree stand at about three thirty in the afternoon, uh, landing one of the few and perhaps one of the largest bucks killed with one of these weapons in the state of Missouri. Um, there's only two states that allow that. Yeah, that I, I want to go to one of them and I want to hunt them. You want to try that? Some, the I thing is, oh, here's here's what here's okay. This is my take. If you're going to allow spear hunting, the law should say that you have to do it in a loincloth. <laughs> Seriously? Okay. Uh, I mean, if you're going to go primitive, go primitive for God's sake. You know, I mean, if you're going to do it with a spear, then you got to be wearing a loincloth and no shirt. You got to have the war paint. Go all the way. Don't you think? I mean, just picture it. Picture guy. I'm not. I mean, don't I don't want to picture a guy. In a now, people don't know that we're wearing loincloths right here in the radio show. 
I can tell you right now, I yeah. wouldn't be sitting in here. You in wouldn't. this in this <laughs> non ventilated room. Naked? Naked <laughs> radio. Yeah. That's weird, man. That's <laughs> just weird. No, seriously though. I mean that'd be that'd be primitive. I mean take Can you imagine I mean, seriously, take, think about sitting in late November or December, sitting they, in a tree the, the in Wisconsin. Indians did it. The Indians did it. They hunted like that. They bundled up, buddy. <laughs> we think. How do you, I mean, you are crazy. You look at. I think all that beard hair is getting to you. We, <laughs> hey, his beard is getting to be nice. Yeah. I'm thinking it's getting looking good. Hey, um, we got some uh, friends out in South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Reservation that would let us go and hunt buffalo like that. You're actually pushing them to take me on a hunt and put me in a loincloth. I'd like to. Not that I'd like to see you in a loincloth, but I wouldn't like to see me in a loincloth. No, I wouldn't either. I, but fact, our viewers might. Are you crazy? I'll film you. But you know what? The thing about the loincloth is it only covers the front. That's all right. Your butt cheeks stick out the back. Yeah. That's going to be a well, great episode, I think. Going to be. Hey, listen, here. Yeah. We have to talk about this yet. Well, that's all right. We'll talk about it after the show today. I'm thinking. So. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I talk about high action and viewer rating. I mean, we'll have to see what our ratings go like I mean, uh, on the on the reruns of that show. I would bet they drop. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. bet they wouldn't. Yeah. Did you see we that might even moron get some... running around in a loincloth? Turn it off! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But they are trying to get you to do that. Actually, that wasn't my idea. <laughs> yeah, that was the guide out there yeah, who is Native American, full blood, and he said, hey, look, I'd like to get one of you guys to come out here and do this completely primitive with a longbow. He wants to do it with a recurve or a spear in a loincloth cover up with a with a actual buffalo hide and sneak up on the buffalo and do it completely the old way. Hmm. Just think you could be one of the first white men to actually do that on the Indian reservation. I think it'd be actually uh we should take a viewer or a listener poll and see how many people would be interested in an episode like that. And then we can ask them which one of us they'd like to see do it. <laughs> I know it's you. You're much younger. Everything is is uh, definitely probably more where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, well you know, man. when you get to be a little bit older, things tend to not you can take day put. Take up donations for <laughs> each one of us. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Hear me out on this. We take up donations for each one of us, uh -huh. and whoever hits their goal first has to hunt it, and then all the money for the donation goes to charity. Hey, that's a great so, idea. Yeah. And on that note, let's take a break quick because um, I think that we've said enough. <laughs> Be right back after these messages. Hey, welcome back to Biggie Outdoor Radio. And, you know, Brandon, we were just talking about uh, the, the buffalo hunting and the loincloth and stuff like that. And speaking of that. I got Lance from Pine Ridge right here, so uh, go. okay, Lance, you still there? Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, you know, in the last segment, Brandon and I were talking about uh, getting him out there and hunting in a loincloth. That should be good entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> he he thinks that what we should do is uh, is take up a collection and then whoever hits their goal first to, uh, for charity is the guy that has to go out there and do it. And uh, I, I just think we should just make him do it. Uh, yeah, I think he should be in the hat, too. I think. Yeah. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. All right, that means there's a chance. <laughs> whoever misses first, I want that one. Oh, yeah. Well, I, actually, I recall Big E missing first out there. Yeah. It's only a couple times, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it depends on what we were hunting. Yeah. 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 How's the season going so far this year? Um, well, actually, I just got back from the Indian National Finals in Las Vegas, taking my daughter out there. Oh, for the my first my first deer hunter just pulled in today. I'm just getting ready to go. Okay. All right. We can, so we'll see. Stay tuned on that one. <laughs> I haven't even been hunting myself yet, so. Oh, oh. We we left on Halloween and just arrived on Monday. So okay. was gone for ten days. So how about antelope? How'd the antelope season go? Um, I didn't take anybody this year. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
I, I typically have, you know, between seven and ten guys, but this year, because they raised the price of the tag so high, I kind of just kind of set it out, I guess, as a way to... Well, you know, uh, still I, I look at it, and uh, it's still a, a overall... Even with the price of the tags, it's still a, a darn uh, good hunt, and, and it's affordable. And uh, yeah. I think yeah. that you know, especially for the amount of antelope and the quality that you got out there. So you know, I mean, oh, yeah. I encourage That's something I enjoy doing the most, actually, of all the things that I guide. Yeah, um, is antelope because you get to cover so much, so much country. I don't think people can imagine how much country. 5,500 square miles is, you know, or 2.8 million acres until you get out trying to cover it on back roads and, and trails and, and you see how unbelievable the amount of terrain and the variety of terrain that we have out here. And then uh, most people, once they give it a chance, they just keep coming back, you know. Yeah, that's right. Year. I'll tell you what, we sure seen a lot of it when we were out there doing the coyote hunt. Uh, you know that we got to travel all over the place, and yeah, I cannot <laughs> believe that place just keeps on going out there. Yeah, we we couldn't cover it in the time. I say it all the time. We couldn't cover it in the time that you're here, even if we tried. <laughs> yeah, there's so much country out here, and that's what people that's what people really uh, really enjoy and look forward to coming back to because you you cover all this country. You know, a bunch of hunters all hunting the same game as you or the same trophy as you. You know, and uh, yeah, people enjoy that. You know, it's not so it's not overcrowded, I guess. Now, how's your weather out there? You got any snow yet? I had some yesterday, but it melted off now. Oh. Like, that was the first first snow. It was just uh, maybe an inch, you know, and the wind blew and whatever. And today's today's a much nicer day. It's probably in the I think it's high forties, forty eight. Supposed to be great Saturday and Sunday. It's supposed to be in the low sixties. For, no, for the middle of November, that's kind of crazy. Actually, it's happened before, but makes the prime times not last as long. Makes it a little tougher. You really got to kind of know where you're going in the mornings and the evenings, and uh, hopefully have some luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, uh, you know, we're kind of. Ho- is there any mule deer tags left for this year out there? Oh, well, as far as I knew, there were. There were. There were a few left. Yeah, it was still. Okay. Uh, actually, I just became available because I was gone, and so I needed a day or so rest to take care of some things and get back in order. And so now we're just getting started. So right. we'll see how, how it goes. But I've been 100% success for antelope and deer over all these years. Deer have done the most because we didn't have an on member season until five years ago, and then deer, we started doing that in the mid 90s. Yeah, that's it's good success rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's plenty of animals out there. I'm telling you, if anybody goes home without one, it's their own fault. <clears throat> yeah, if you just keep, keep moving. <laughs> keep moving. Uh, and I love will cover, you know, 150, 200 miles a day. You know, and uh, looking, and you see other other game while you're at it, but uh, kind of gives me a reason to be out scouting and for whatever else I might be looking for, whether it's coyotes or deer. Yeah. My turkeys or whatever, you know, so. But yeah, I've been doing it for 22 years, so. Still got that energy level up there. Still look forward to everybody's hunt when they come up. Well, in January, uh, you know, our new uh, series comes back out on Pursuit Channel, and so we'll have episodes hunting with you out there again. You need to come out and finish killing some more coyotes, huh? Yeah, yeah. I remember the last time you were there, it was it, it, that's, a, that's a tough thing on Taiwan. Yep. Oh man, and our phone just got disconnected, and we just lost contact with uh, with Lance from uh, <laughs> Pine Ridge out there, right in the middle of a conversation. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to have to get back out there and do some coyote hunting and finish that episode. Don't yeah. you think, Brandon? Yeah, he was actually just talking about how uh, we kind of had a tough run. The coyotes. We got some coyotes that last time we went out there, but uh, they definitely got the best of us. 
I'd say if anybody was keeping tabs on the score, I think the Coyotes, uh, the Coyotes, the Coyotes won. But I'm going to yeah. tell you what: <laughs> if you're looking for a, a, a hunt, predator hunt, coyote hunt, stuff like that, and again, you know, we talk about inexpensive types of things to go and do and keep yourself hunting. You got hogs. You can go down to Georgia. You can hunt hogs with gum gum log and bland. And I mean, he's going to cook for you. It's fantastic. You can go out and hunt coyotes out there with Lance in, in South Dakota. And let me tell you something: hunting coyotes with Lance is like going out and hunting squirrels. You know, oh, it is. There's coyotes ev- everywhere. They're yeah. everywhere. Uh, you know, he talks about the price of his antelope tags going up, and it's not that bad. You can still do a guided antelope hunt out there with him for around thirty five hundred bucks, and that's that's the tag, the guiding, everything. You know, it's not bad when you really think about it. Uh, and that might be even a little less. You'd have to, I mean, we'd have to check with them and stuff. It might be even a little less. And and your your mule deer is going to run you around thirty nine hundred mule deer. Let's license and guiding the whole nine yards. Yep. You know, most places in uh, in the West right now, a mule deer, you're up at uh, six seven thousand dollars right now. Oh yeah. By the time you do a mule deer hunt, and these guys are a hundred percent and a good mule deer and a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a 100% guarantee, but they're running a 100% success rate. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So, uh, and I'll tell you what, you're never going to hunt in a more beautiful place than the Badlands of South oh, Dakota. No, it's gorgeous <laughs> out there. I mean, what yeah. we found fossils out there. Yeah, we did. Yeah, some old fossils. We've, <laughs> we even found some, uh, we were hunting across some old firing ranges and... Uh, we found an old uh, twenty old, millimeter round. Yep, and then we yep. found fossils of turtles we saw out there, and uh, yep. we found. I mean, it's amazing, amazing country. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking you've seen it all in this world, <laughs> let me tell you, you need to go see the Badlands, and you need to go hunt it. Go out there with a Native American guide, and let them guys go out there and show you the land that they have. It's beautiful, and they manage it well. The animals are just thick, and they're thriving out there. I mean, the Pine Ridge Reservation tribe really knows what they're doing. Yeah, um, and you know what's really cool? What I what I always liked about it, whether we got Lance or we got his buddy that took us out when we were coyote hunting for a couple of days, Yeah, they, they give you so much history without, without you even trying or without even asking. I mean, people would pay money to go and ride around with these guys. Just for a just, tour. Just for a tour and the yeah. history of it all. Yeah. And you get all of this. It's, it just makes it... It makes the trip worth it. Whether yeah. you come home with something or not, it makes it worth it just to go out there and hear it and learn it and and just see how much these guys know and love the land that they live on. Yeah, It's awesome. It's cool. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, you're driving around with them, and they're giving you little bits of information and little bits of history on the land and, yeah. you know, and on their, on their people and the hunting and things like that. And, you know, what gets me is, like, Okay, that's an, that's another Native American tribe. You know, they're not out there trying to figure out ways to go out there and desecrate the animals at night and do things like that. Why is it that certain areas, you know, do certain things differently? They're preserving their animals so that they can um, turn it into an income and and bring uh, non-tribal members out there to hunt and mm-hmm. and make a good living off of it. And I, I wish the tribes in Wisconsin here uh, could could do it more like they do it at the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation over there. Yeah, figure it out. It's uh it's it's too bad because you know it's like it's <laughs> almost like here it's a greed thing and they just want yeah. to harvest, harvest, harvest. But out there, you know, they're very conservative and things like that. And uh, I, I gotta hand it to them. I mean you have got to go hunt the Pine Ridge Reservation. Uh even if you just go on a coyote hunt, go out there and let them take you up turkey hunting for Miriam's <laughs> Prairie uh, Dog. Prairie dog, whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, on that note, Brandon, uh, we're coming to click up on a commercial. We're going to need to take another quick break. And we'll be right back with some more Biggie Outdoor Radio. This segment of Biggie Outdoors is brought to you by Snap Fitness of Wausau. It's time to get in shape, and Snap Fitness is the right place to do it. With two locations in Weston and Wausau, you're never far from a Snap Fitness. Open 24-7 for members with clean and well-maintained equipment. Check out their new location across from Fleet Farm on Wausau's north side with all new machines and equipment. Sign up for some classes or training. Pick up the supplements you need and take advantage of the monthly deals and sign-up specials they have going on now. The staff at Snap Fitness is waiting for you to assist you in any way they can. 
So head on down to Snap Fitness today and get signed up. Welcome back to Biggie Outdoor Radio. We're uh, heading down the home stretch in the show here. And you know, Brandon, um, you know, we just had a gun show down here at Cedar Creek. And one of the big things that was going around was the suppressor issue. Oh, yeah. Uh, the suppressor. Everybody's talking about the suppressors, and it's a big craze. And, then, you know, they're all like, oh, great, many we can hunt with suppressors, and we can do this, and we can do that. You know, um, there's two sides to every story. And, and the, the history on the suppressor is uh, back in 2012, some lawyer down in Wauwatosa was charged with owning one. And uh, he challenged it, the, the constitutionality of it, and he won. And that's when the law kind of changes all around that. And um, uh, now, if you go, I mean, all over the U.S., I, I think there's maybe only one or two states that you can't hunt with or you can't own a suppressor huh um uh, i'm not sure if you can hunt with one in michigan but you can own it I, I mean there's some there's some different laws in different states but uh suppressors are becoming widely popular now in south africa and in a lot of other countries i'm not just talking south africa i'm talking new zealand i'm talking a lot of countries i'm going to tell you something it's highly frowned upon and it's rude it's considered rude if you do not use a suppressor did you know that I did not know that, no. Yeah. They actually, you know, like Americans go over there, and, and they kind of accept the fact that a lot of us Americans go over there and we don't have suppressors. So yeah. when we take our rifles over there, it's a little different. But for the most part, they expect the people that live over there to have them on their weapons and use them. Uh, they don't like the noise. They think it's rude when you're when you're hunting someplace and you, uh, and you are using loud rifles and things like that, and people just don't like to hear all the banging. The suppressor doesn't make a high-powered rifle like a 7 millimeter Magnum or .30-06 make that little choo -choo sound like it does on, on TV. Uh, it doesn't work like that. No. Yeah. But, but it reduces the sound and the echo quite a bit. And really, uh, it, and it helps the recoil a ton. It does. really does. So uh, when I was over there, I actually purchased a suppressor um, and had it fit to my 7 millimeter Magnum that has the boss. Now, uh, I don't, I didn't bring it back with me. Obviously, uh, the one thing you're surely not going to do is fly back and forth with a, with a big old suppressor in your suitcase unless you want to feel the rubber glove, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you so, flew with it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, <laughs> no, I, I left it there. Uh, it's it's in South Africa. It's with our PHs over there, you know. And of course, uh, you know. But whatever. So the 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 suppressor is, um, it's something that that I think everyone should take a look at owning over here and having having one. And you try hunting with that with your rifle, and you're going to start seeing uh, it's better for your ears. How many guys over here that hunt a lot have hearing damage, like me? What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and you you gotta you know you gotta think about okay now we're hunting close to these um, uh, subdivisions and these little housing areas and things like that. There's a noise issue. Yeah. Um, it's it's something to consider, and uh, you know now we can hunt with them. I mean, they're legal in Wisconsin. You can hunt with them. You do have to go get, uh, I, I mean, it's crazy because we have to go get this permit and this big federal firearms license, some sort of federal firearms license to get it. Over in South Africa, you can just walk into a gun shop and buy one. Huh. Over the counter. I can buy a suppressor easier than I can buy a gun over there. Wow. Yeah, There's a huge waiting period to buy a gun for these people over there. But you can walk in and buy a suppressor right now, right over the corner. Just think about that. They're laying impressive. right there. In the, you just walk in and tell them, I need a suppressor for this weapon. And they'll say, oh, yeah, uh, you like this one? You like this one? Yeah, okay, uh, here you go. 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> just like done. That. It's just done. like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Good luck getting that to happen in Wisconsin. Yeah, or yeah. In, in the U.S. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's uh, but... But... Uh, 
you know, there's a lot of uh, controversy over them. Uh, people are thinking that, you know, the only person that would want a suppressor is somebody that's out there wanting to poach and things like that, and it's that's not true. Um, definitely not true. Uh, sound suppressors are, are, I guess, they're good for you for a lot of reasons. Like I said, I stated, you know, the, the hearing, the, the recoil, um, the sound. What you got going on there, Brandon? Well, actually, I was... Uh I'm still reading on that outdoor news. Uh, it was uh, a 14 year old hunter uh, shot a charging Kodiak bear at 15 yards, and they weren't even bear hunting. Uh, they ended up shooting it in self defense. They were out hunting, uh, hunting for deer, and they stumbled across this this monster Kodiak bear that had been stalking them, and uh, ended up having to shoot it in self defense. So. Wow, uh, that's about all I, I read here because I was kind of glancing down at it and trying to listen. Well, I'll tell you what: if you're so, out hunting in Kodiak country, you got to almost expect to run into a Kodiak. I mean, Kodiak Island is known for the bears. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was. Uh, let's see, this this uh, 14 year old boy is a native uh, to Kodiak. Uh, him and his uncle, him and his uncle were out chasing deer, and they stumbled into an adult Kodiak that had been stalking them, and uh, they ended up shooting it at 15 yards as it was charging them. Wow, so yeah, that's uh, that's close. I mean, that's closer than you really need to. Uh, yep. It, yeah. This this kid stood his ground against uh -huh. a charging bear and got a clean kill shot at 15 yards away, uh, protecting his uncle. So that's uh, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, that is that's darn impressive. I don't know. I don't know many people at all who would be able to stand their ground with a bear that close to him. I mean. Yeah, fourteen or fifteen yards. I mean, that's that's close. Man, yeah. is that close? Especially with an animal that size and that aggressive. You know, the, the thing is, is uh, you know, there's there's places in the world where they think that um, it's not grizzly country. Yeah. Okay, there you expect a grizzly. You go to places like Colorado, and they'll tell you, "Oh well, you know, uh, it's not grizzly country. No grizzlies in Colorado." No, they, they usually say just black bears, mountain lions. But Colorado is uh, grizzly country, and you know, um, there's people that have spotted them. Steamboat Springs. Uh, yep, yep, and. I'm telling you that there have been attacks. Even I, I've, I've talked to folks that know people that have been attacked brutally. Yeah. Uh, a fellow that uh, a fellow was telling me a story here just a, a few weeks ago um, about his good friend who was in Colorado and had been hunting uh, for black bear, and evidently they used some sort of meat or whatever in any way. He came back in this this uh, dead animal that they had used for the black bear was drug way up the side of the mountain, and they said, "Hey, that's not a that's not a black bear that did that." And uh, so he continued to hunt, and he got up to the top of this mountain, and this it was a real, real tough mountain to get up. And he went up there, and and, uh, and he ended up running face to face with this grizzly. And the way that this mountain was set up, there was only one way out of there and it was the way he came up he got him caught in a canyon and this grizzly just mauled him and somehow uh, there was no cell phone service up there or anything but the family realized that he was missing because he didn't come home you know or whatever so he laid up there all night long and the people went looking for him and uh, they found him but he ended up having to lay there for an entire night oh. bleeding Wondering if that bear was going to come back. <laughs> yep, yep. And so they uh, they ended up getting him out of there, and it was just, uh, uh, I guess they had a helicopter that crashed when they went up there to get him, and, and one of the horses with all the rescue stuff on it uh, went over a cliff, and um, it, was, it was a tough deal. But somehow they ended up, I think the guy that got mauled killed the grizzly. He ended up shooting the grizzly. Huh. And uh, and this was in Colorado, so you know, of course, then you know, fish and game gets involved because he killed a grizzly. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it was attacking him, but uh, you know, still nonetheless. But um, it's 
just because you're not in grizzly country doesn't mean you shouldn't be on the lookout. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Uh, grizzlies can be anywhere, and uh, that's definitely something that I guess you need to be aware of. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So um, you you would think you wouldn't think that animal to be there, but uh, well, kind of like we wouldn't think of a mule deer to be in Wisconsin, but you know. Well, like and we were talking about last week, you know. You know, and if grizzlies can migrate down through there, I mean, what's to stop them from eventually migrating here? You know, I mean, I understand that grizzlies like mountains, mm-hmm. but heck, I mean, uh, they could they could migrate this far. I mean, what's to stop them? Yeah, sometimes you know? they just they well, they get Forrest Gump syndrome. They just feel like wandering around and keep on walking. Next thing you know, you're at the ocean. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go for a walk to the mailbox and keep on walking. So. Yep. Well, with that, folks, we better cut to a quick break here, and we'll be right back after a few messages. Yep. We'll take a quick break. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back as we're wrapping up our final hour of uh, Big E Outdoor Radio. And uh, during the break, Brandon and I were just looking up, uh, you know, we were talking about prairie dog hunting, so we were looking up prairie dog facts. And, of course, um, some people out there frown on whacking prairie dogs. Um, You know, we go out there and we shoot them. But they don't realize that uh, there's prairie dog is is a rodent, and prairie dog is also a pest. So... When people are out there and they're shooting 100 prairie dogs in a day and doing things like that, um, it's not just uh, out there killing something to kill. You're you're hunting, you're actually enjoying it, but also you are uh, helping out the farmers and stuff out there with a form of pest control. And um, this tell you some of the things. I mean, first of all, the obvious. The obvious is they dig holes that the cattle will step in and break their legs. That's the obvious. They just tear up the land. And everything where the prairie dogs live, there's there's nothing. They'll, they'll kill the vegetation around there, and it's just, there's nothing. Well, the biggest one is the fact that prairie dogs carry the plague. They carry the bubonic plague. Um, now, the bubonic, uh, before the advent of modern medicine, the bubonic plague hit the humans uh, in epidemic proportions, like every every few centuries, yeah, uh, you know. But today, you know, things are cleaner. Uh, we use modern insecticides, antibiotics, and things like that, so we don't really get it in developed countries like the U.S. But, but our prairie dogs carry it. They're carriers. Mm-hmm. They get it. They it wipes out the prairie dog towns. It wipes out some of them. They get it, and it, and it and it can be transferred to humans. So, what gets me, Brandon, is that they're out there, and the DNR and all these governments are so worried about CWD, yeah. which, which cannot be transmitted to humans. No, exactly. But we got these little prairie dogs running around out there, yeah, and they do. Uh, it's it's curable and treat in in humans if it's diagnosed and treated only in the early stages. Yeah. After that, it's not. Yeah. Uh, first, it feels like the bad case of the flu. Uh, it includes chills and fever, um, and and then it goes into the bloodstream. Yeah. And it says if the disease is left untreated, it has a thirty to ninety percent fatality rate, and it can kill you in as little as ten days. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, and how we, how we actually found this, uh, still reading on, on my outdoor news site here, um, I had stumbled on this article while we were talking about prairie dogs, coincidence. Right, right, right. Uh, this, this 16-year-old girl who actually lives in Michigan, whose name is unstated in here, um, she was participating in a hunt in Oregon, I believe it says here. Yep. Right. And she contracted the bubonic plague. This was October 16th. There have been 16 cases of the plague in the United States this year. In 2015? Um, Yes, in 2015. Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Georgia, California have have been the other states, but this is the first one for Michigan. 
But remember, the girl contracted this while she was hunting in Oregon. Oh, and, okay. uh, was, and I would imagine that's the same with the Georgia and Florida ones if you looked into it. Um, I, yeah, and it doesn't say in this article because it's focusing on this girl's instance here, but right. uh, she got it from a, a flea bite. A flea bite. Yep, and they say it's mostly carried in rodents, but it can still come from uh, dogs and cats. Uh huh. So you got to be careful. So there you go. Another reason to not only because they're just a pain in the butt, but uh, obviously you want to get rid of the fleas and stuff on your, your animals. You know what's funny is they call the, the bubonic plague the Black Death. That's also what they the, call the 14th century plague in Europe. Yeah. yeah. It's also what they call the Cape Buffalo. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this is the original Black Death. Uh, they, and a lot of people think of this as a disease from the past. They think it's gone. They're yeah. not going to get it. But I, I'm here to tell you, it, it does exist. You can get it. Um, you start screwing around with these little critters that uh, that could have fleas. Yeah. So think about that. If you're out there hunting prairie dogs and you decide, hey, I want to get this one mounted, and you grab it, and that thing had fleas, and the fleas bite you, you could catch the Did bubonic we- plague and become deathly ill so uh you better keep that in mind and 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 you don't necessarily even have to get the flea off of a prairie dog if you're hunting in one of those areas yeah uh you know that that flea could have come from a prairie dog to an antelope or prairie dog to a mule deer or whatever yeah and it can transfer to humans well you can bet you i'm going to be wearing my flea collar next time we go to south dakota then (laughs) You know, uh, it's, listen to this, it's not just carried, it's carried by squirrels, chipmunks, and other wild rodents. Hmm. So, you know, um, but it's mostly carried by the uh, prairie dogs and then it's spread to them. So, unreal. Uh, Hmm. It's on unreal in, that uh you know that this this plague is still running around in in the US and uh you don't hear much about it but the thing is is okay how many cases did you say there were this year well in the states no yeah in the united in, states in the united states this year there have been 16 cases okay. and it says there have about about 1000 to 2000 people a year are infected Okay. And a lot of people think that this is a disease of the past, and it <laughs> very much is not. Okay, so 16 cases of bubonic plague in the U.S. that come from prairie dogs, squirrels, whatever. Yeah. And we're chasing around CWD, which has never been transmitted to a human. And wasting all this money on a disease that really we should be focusing on diseases that we can get, like TB, yeah, uh, in in uh, bovine because bovine tuberculosis it can be you know yeah you can. Uh, you know hoof and mouth uh, uh, I mean these things on cattle farms and there's other diseases we should be worried about and not uh, CWD I mean it's just what what a waste of money yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, what I find funny is how how we go from talking about grizzlies 15 minutes ago to talking about talking about the bubonic plague. You know, well, it's because it's all in the outdoor news. It is. I mean, yeah, it's it's amazing actually how much you can learn. It's not just an entertaining site, not just entertaining stuff to look up, but uh, educational. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have thought to watch out for that unless I was picking up a prairie dog. Well, you know what? It, we, and even we, when you're picking up a prairie dog, you don't think about it. Well, we, we've hunted prairie dogs. Yeah, we wouldn't even think about it. No, I'll think about it now. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll think about it when we're out there antelope hunting. <laughs> if I get anywhere near a prairie dog, I'm going to have you picking it up with a plastic bag. Yeah, yeah that's there. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean they're cute little critters, but woofta, you know. And I can tell you, you get anywhere near me, you start feeling like you got the flu. Mm-hmm. You better get to a doctor. And I mean quick. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Because if you think it's just the flu and you're wrong, <laughs> you you're better sure. catch it in the early stages. Otherwise, you're yeah. you're fighting the numbers. And Yeah, what a, what a terrible way to die. Oh, man. I just can't believe that uh, 
you know, <laughs> that we're out here again, like I said, wasting money chasing around diseases that... Well, anyway, Brandon, you know, <laughs> we'll just uh, kind of let it go with that. And um, you know what? The next time that we're on the air... It's going to be the second day of rifle season. Opener. Yeah, that's right. The opener. We're hoping everybody's out there having a good and safe opener and successful. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't see the numbers of deer out there that uh, that there should be or that there were. You know, when I was a kid, Brandon I used to be able to sit out there and and uh, hunt deer and, and, and herds of does would come by and then you wait for a buck. And, I mean, we just saw a lot of deer and they're just... There just aren't the deer anymore. It's it's a completely different game now, right? Than it was, you know, back, you know, certainly back then. But even when I was a kid, yeah. When I first started, you know, when I was able to legally hunt, uh, it's it's definitely changed since then. But nonetheless, it is still a statewide holiday. It is. It is a holiday. There'll be many businesses <laughs> yeah. that'll be shutting down and delay, be pe- letting people off work. There will be people. Calling in sick. <laughs> Mysteriously getting sick on Friday. Yeah. And, so, uh, and missing, uh, well, it's a short week, the next week anyway, with the holiday. You know, you got Thanksgiving, so a lot of places yeah. are not open on the Friday. That's Black Friday coming up after that. So, I think, I think I'm going to come down with the flu probably on Friday morning, and I'm probably going to be under the weather the entire following week. Well, so, now that you just said it on the air, I don't think you're going to get away with it. Why not? You probably are going to get caught. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, with that, uh, we wish you a, a safe opener. Safe opener and successful. Yeah. Yep. Bag a big one. Send us your pictures. And we're going to wrap things up for today. Thanks for listening to Biggie Outdoor Radio, and we will see you next week. <laughs>